I'm actually talking about the present today, not the future. And I have a question for you. What do you consider to be the main characteristic of human beings? The main characteristic that allowed us to pass from being organized in tribes to ultimately become a worldwide civilization of seven point billion individuals and growing. I guess you are answering intelligence. And indeed, intelligence is a very powerful tool, but it's not the direct cause that made us what we are today, the masters of this planet. Human beings can harvest, exploit, and consume three major resources to a level that is a millions of times bigger than any other living form ever existed on this planet. And these uh, source of air resources are also the fundamental pillars upon which our civilization is based, and I would say even life itself. These are access to clean water, access to energy, and access to communication. The rate of consumption of these resources has been growing exponentially during the thousands of years of evolution. So what we have here was quite evident during the Industrial Revolution. We were, in phase one, consuming exponentially more than before. And this went through the phase two. And again, the phase three, the third industrial revolution, each phase is consuming more and more. And now we are at the beginning of uh, this amazing industry that is called 4.0, where we talk about technological breakthroughs that are amazing, genetics, nanotechnology, robotics, and the holy grail the artificial intelligence. These technology open up to us a new horizons, but have you ever thought about what is the driving force that is propelling us towards the future? How do we sustain these dreams? With the drug of this planet, the oil. And believe me or not, I have nothing against oil is the oil that has everything against us. Because by deploying these kind of technologies, we are contaminating our air, polluting our waters, wasting our lands with artificial waste that will stay there for hundreds of years. And this model doesn't even work. Because while it's benefiting a minority of the population, 2.5 billion roughly, we have 1 billion people lacking access to clean water. We have 2 billion people lacking access to electricity. Let's not forget we have 5 billion people that are still not connected to the internet. That means no education, no connection to the 21st century. And we might assume that these problems are related to poverty. Yes. And no, these problems are related to the fact that while we are propelling our future, virtual reality, blockchain, artificial intelligence, we are using technology that are 150 years old. They stay the same. We are still propelling our future by asking millions of people to dig the earth for extracting coal, oil, and minerals. This is a social failure, and it's a technological failure. And this is a paradigm that is based on the idea or the assumption that we live in a, limit, a limited resources environment. That limited resources means that we have to manage them, we have to control them, and we have to defend them in case of necessity, even for war. And indeed, water, for example, Gaia, uh, you actually introduced this topic, water. Everybody is saying that water is a global issue. It is. And by the, by the way, is, water is considered to be the, the blue gold of the 21st century. 
But how comes that we have a problem of water by living in a planet that is covered 70% of the surface by water? We are not living on Mars. We are living on the Earth, which is a water planet. The problem is, Gaia, that 97% is salty. The other 2% are kept in the poles, in the form of ice. And the humanity deals with only 1% that is defined as sweet water. But this 1%, guess what? 70% is polluted. The problem of water is not scarcity. It might be that some local realities are affected by scarcity, but the problem of water is pollution. And who is polluting this water? It's us. And you rightly said, somebody was talking about the second law of thermodynamic. We need energy to propel a, a system, or a process, better saying, that deals with the purification of water. And you guess what we do? We are using, for propelling this process, for purification of water, we are using oil, which is the cause that pollutes it in the first place. We have, forget, we have forgotten about one single most important thing. We are living next to the biggest nuclear power station ever conceived by nature. It's free of charge, it's unlimited, it's clean, and by the way, you might reach, you might be poor, but you still have access to it. It doesn't belong to anybody. Yes, it is, it's the sun. From a distance of 150 million kilometers, the sun hits the earth, with an intention, with a solar irradiation, that 45 minutes of solar irradiation equals the entire human consumption of so one year. You got it right. 24 hours equals 25 years of consumption of electricity or energy whatsoever. Did you get it? So the question is, to Kate, somebody was asking, how do we manage to deal with the passage of capitalism? But the problem is not changing the rules of the game. The, the fact is to change the way we make money. Because that we assume that making money is destroying resources, exploitation of resources. Instead, we should make money out of creation by leveraging of resources that we have, basically unlimited. And this is the idea. You are looking at a render, an image of a beautiful city. It might be Barcelona in 20 years' time. What, is you, what you are looking at here are smart buildings. And these smart buildings are not the ones we have today. These smart buildings are power stations. Are power stations that deal with the purification of water they need and they generate the electricity they need. And by the way, they even provide surplus energy that can be distributed to other buildings in case of needing. This is the concept of the energy net. Let me tell you about this, the energy net. The, the energy net is based on a delocalization of power stations. Instead of having a macro, a mega power station, thousands of kilometers away, distributing stupid energy and stupid low-quality water. We have thousands, hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of power stations. They only do the following. They provide the services next to where the people are consuming these services. And they generate these services, namely water, clean water, electricity, and all the rest, by dealing with the harvesting of the solar energy as a primarily form of energy, or the derivative, wind power, biomass, and whatever, renewable energy. And this is called the energy net. It's the biggest revolution. You certainly have heard about blockchain. Energy net, I guess you haven't. The energy net is where information technologies merges with water and electricity. They become three variables. They stay on the same level. The internet of things, real internet of things, made of what I call thermodynamic computers. And this is what I do. Because I'm not in the, in the business of converting buildings. I'm in the business of making machines that go 
right there where there is nothing, rural area. This is five years ago here in Barcelona. I was looking at the sun in Mataró. And I said, water, sun. The only way to do business is to create an, 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 an technology that deals with two variables that are free. Then I went through a process of evolution and I became more radical. And I made this, a 45 meters long machine that works on solar energy, purifies water from any source of contamination. That means uh, chemical, bacteriological, or physical. Of course, it desalinates water. It behaves as a system, a telecommunication system. It's an internet of things. It's full of sensors. It's full of appliances, applications, smart health, landing pad for drones. Just name it. Of course, he has a way for interacting with human beings that look like a big smartphone. We have a nice looking designed interfaces. And we have our pro way of distributing water that does not deal with bottle that you use only once. It's a sophisticated internet of things. It's a smartphone, 30 tons. What is the future? This is the kind of future. What is today a machine that I call thermodynamic computer, but in my dreams, it will become an entity, a living entity, an artificial intelligence entity, something that will look like most probably, oh, this is the next one, I will show you next year. <laughs> this is a render, it's a 4.0. I was actually pointing at the, what I'm looking forward to do. These are no machines. These are us. And technology today is not there for transforming nature. The new frontier of technology today is to recreate nature and save nature from our own destructive attitude. And we have right here today the possibility to do this and embrace it. And the fact that we are here today makes an enormous difference, at least to me and to my personal mission. Thank you for being here very really much. Thank you both. <laughs>